Oh, you should have pulled it on the ground. So today we are going works. through Ecclesiastes. Oh, Whoa! Yeah. It's fun. Is it I love it. it Thanks, Chris, for the Ecclesiastes oh. idea. Is it? Who? And it's by moi. Who? That guy right there. Who's that? I don't know. So, Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a difficult read. Plus. Uh, and here's one of the reasons why. Because Solomon, or the preacher, says that everything that is under the sun or of this world is meaningless. And he even titles the beginning of Ecclesiastes, All is Vanity. Uh, and he also says that these things uh, that we do, all of us, literally all of us, do as humans are vanity such as wisdom. Wisdom's vanity. Self-indulgence. Living wisely. Pay attention. <laughs> uh, toil, which is work or burdens, as we have defined in my Sunday school class. Um, and wealth and honor. Those are all forms of vanity. Like, they're all vanity. And all of these things are vanity or meaningless unless we give the glory to God and honor Him. So if you have wisdom and you're not honoring God with it, it it's nothing. It's vanity. One of the main things that we need to focus on that I mentioned, especially in this generation that we have now, toil, toil working, toil. and trouble. Like that person. <laughs> toil is defined as exhausting physical labor, and it's very hard to focus on this sometimes for people because everywhere we go is something to do. Whether it be at school, or you go to work or home, or at a friend's house, there's something to do to distract you from the Bible sometimes. There's something to distract you from, like, the real world, the truth. Um, uh, it can be a phone, it can be talking to someone, or playing a game of some sort. Um, if you're not honoring God, it's pointless to be doing what you're doing, uh, according to Solomon or the preacher. There's one reason uh, that work is so hard, and that is the fall of man. You know, Adam and Eve went into that garden, and Eve was like, pick a bite out of this fruit. In Genesis 3.17, talks about how God punished Adam for listening to Eve by cursing him around. Uh, and it says this. Uh, oh, wait. Flip to the slide. Uh, in case you don't have a Bible, it's up here. Um, and to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground but because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. Um, by, sweat of your, by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Oh, that is deep. That is deep. <laughs> That's what I He's getting thrown back in Oh my gosh, you guys are full of it. Oh, wow. Wait, can I turn off the list? Way better with a presentation with Outlook. Sure. That's a lot of words. I know. Really like it. I wrote it. It took me over two hours to write this. Oh, wow. That's, that's, no, that's yeah. not a good thing. Like. <laughs> nope. Uh -oh. um, another thing to think about from Ecclesiastes is that there's a time and a place for everything according to God's will. Sometimes we call these seasons, and in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes it says seasons. Um, we have seasons of abundance, anxiety, happiness, and hardship. And all of these have time and a place according to God's will. And I really want to highlight God's will because sometimes we think, I want this to happen now, or something like that, but it's not always going to work like that. Because it's perfectly timed to God's will and not ours, and God's will is always better than ours. And no matter what, we should have joy through all of these seasons. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 through 8 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up where it's planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. 
a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, and a time for war and a time for peace. You just made that a rap. That was fast. Good job. You should make a song out of that. that. You should make a dish track. Do you see that? Like, he was just, he was going off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what? Oh, man. I forgot that 6 through 8 is on another slide. Next one. One of the biggest things from Ecclesiastes in, that I found, fearing God. Yeah. Fearing God? Fearing God. Fear there. Fear God. Fear. Fear God, mother. Yeah, he talks about the <laughs> So, in Ecclesiastes 5, 1 through 7, Solomon mentions fearing God. We see this quite a bit in the Bible, like Deuteronomy 8, 6, Proverbs 1, 7, and Psalms 2, 11. Uh, all of these verses mention fearing God, but what does that exactly mean? What does fearing God mean? It's described by a lot of people as honoring Him and giving Him reverence. I like to keep it short and sweet in my mind, and I just say surrendering to him and just witnessing his awe and his glory. Um, but in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, it says, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Uh, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Uh, and then it goes on to say in verse 14, For God uh, will bring every deed into ju judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. Uh, this is fast. Whoa. Okay, ready? We gotta wrap. We gotta wrap. Go. No, we're not. So in Ecclesiastes 5, 1 through 7, it says, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. To draw near to listen is better than to offer the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they are doing evil. Be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few, for a dream comes with much business, and a fool's voice is and a fool's voice with many words. God, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Let your mouth, uh, not, not, let not your mouth lead you into sin, and do not say before the messenger that it was a mistake. Why, would, why should God be angry at your voice when, and destroy the work of your hands? For when dreams increase and words grow many, there is vanity, but God is the one you must fear. A lot of reading. Yeah, I forgot about that one. This is why it took me over two hours to write this. Um, Ecclesiastes 8, 10 through 13 says, For there is a time and a way for everything. But yeah, that's part of fearing God. That's six. <laughs> 8, 10. There we go. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This is also vanity, because the sentence against an evil deed is not ex uh, executed speedily. The heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be, the, it will be well with those who fear God, because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. Here's my ultimate takeaway and my second to last, well, technically my last slide of this lesson. Do all things in God's glory and surrender yourself to Him and show patience and wait for God to do His will because His will is better than ours will ever be. And here's a verse to support that. As Matthew 6.10 says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. Okay. And there's a logo. <laughs> oh, we have to oh. He made the he made the ball lake and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He did not.